Okay. Three ways. Leave it, leave it to you. Let's cross fingers. <laughs> All right. Yes. <laughs> So thank you for sticking around. I know, I know this is kind of really going um, into the late side, and I'm, I didn't know I was going to you know, be last, so I apologize for all the cheese references because you're probably hungry. I'm not going to help with that. In fact, as we say in Boston, I'm stabbing like Mavin. Right now, I'm stabbing. This is not a good thing. So um, I'm going to do a big, fat, American cheese-style knowledge dump on you all, and it's going to be <laughs> all about Native Script, Ionic, and React Native to build mobile apps. How many mobile developers out there? Show some love. Oh boy, well, you're at the right talk. <laughs> I know, like all you guys, I know you guys. All right. So who am I? Um, my name is Jen Looper. I'm a senior developer advocate at Progress. Progress is one of the, I think we're platinum sponsors, so yay, Progress. Um, I'm actually DevRel for NativeScript. I'm a developer advocate for NativeScript, so just keep that in mind as I go through this talk. Um, I'm comparing frameworks, but the one I know best and the one I advocate for is NativeScript. So um, that's, that's just a little caveat. And I'm here to represent American pasteurized prepared processed cheese food. <laughs> they have to put the word food on it because literally you wouldn't know by eating it. So, <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So, I'm a mobile developer. I've been a mobile developer for a long time. At one point, I had 20 apps that I was supporting in the app store of my own. And that, um, you know, it's a great time to be a mobile developer. Uh, I actually, I feel great about being a mobile developer. So I apologize also for the memes in this, in this talk. Uh, it's a little bit on the cheesy side. Um, so I was, <laughs> I'm gonna, yeah, I, I can go on. Uh, so um, I was asked to do a talk for this conference comparing mobile frameworks. Um, well, what, what, what do we say, when, what are we talking about when we're talking about mobile frameworks? Uh, a lot of times you end up comparing apples to oranges. People will say, well, you know, you can you know, build it in Java for Android, build it with Objective-C or Swift for iOS, or throw in some Ionic or, you know, maybe a Flutter. Um, well, I think it's important not to compare apples and oranges. Um, so even if you narrow your scope a little bit and look at uh, mobile frameworks, there are a lot out there. Let's see if I can remember these. Let's see, this is Xamarin, Ionic, Onsen UI, Flutter, React Native, Accelerator, Titanium, NativeScript, PhoneGap, and jQuery Mobile. <laughs> so <laughs> that was all that would... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> see, the song said, I'm a professional. I'm a professional. So... <laughs> um, this is just a few. This is all that I could cram onto the slide. So there is just a ton of choice out there. But what if you're just a mobile developer and you're just like, you know, I just want to build a mobile app. This is just, this is all I want. I just want to build a mobile app. Well, I think it's important to compare comparable things. So I thought, oh, I'm going to be in the Netherlands. Let's talk about cheese. Um, and you start looking up cheese, and you know, you have Gouda, one of the oldest recorded cheese. I did not know this. This is very interesting. Edam, it ages and travels well, but my favorite, Me Maesdammer, Maesdammer, Maesdammer. I always screw that up. <laughs> it's cheaper to produce than Emmental. <laughs> Yay, Maesdammer. It's like the winner. Well done, Maesdammer. Um, well, similarly, we can compare things like React Native, NativeScript, and Ionic. So um, React Native, you could say, is really the best way to build a JavaScript to native mobile app using React. And it's using a bridging technology, and it's coming to you via Facebook. Whereas NativeScript is the best way to build a JavaScript to native mobile app using a runtime technology and either no framework, Angular, or Vue.js, and it's coming to you from progress. And Dionic is the best way to build a hybrid mobile app. So you see, I'm, I'm, I'm triaging here. We have JavaScript to native type of technologies, and we have hybrid technologies. I think we have to be really clear about our nomenclature. Um, so when someone says, I want to build a hybrid mobile app, think web view. <laughs> OK, that's a hybrid mobile app. It's running in a web view, and uh, for Ionic, in Ionic's case, it's using Cordova. Now, here's where I have to bust out my notes, because this gets wicked complicated. All right, guys. React Native. What I wanted to do is give some hideous infographics that I thought you would love uh, to kind of turn off the appetite a little bit and to talk about how these things are working, how they are running. So React Native is following React's principles for creating and updating the UI uh, by leveraging the virtual DOM. So it has these background threads. 
uh, that um, calculates changes that need to happen on the UI and applies them in batches. And it has a multi-threaded approach that connects the JavaScript interpreter asynchronously to a bridge and connects a background thread to native modules as needed. <laughs> this is like the, the big knowledge jump up in React Native. This is complicated stuff, folks. I don't even know what's going on at Facebook. They figure this out. <laughs> Um, so <laughs> if there's a native module that hasn't been built, you need to use Objective-C or Java to call them directly. Uh, and this makes plugin developing, the development a little bit more cumbersome. So that's kind of interesting. Now, NativeScript takes a little bit different approach, but leverages some of these similar, similar ideas. It prefers a single-threaded approach. So it's using the UI thread to execute the UI, funnily enough. Um, so developers can access any native API directly from JavaScript. So there's no, read to write, no need to write any native code. So a lot of complexity is also abstracted away from you via NativeScript modules, such as action bar. It's just a little uh, bit of markup, you know, and then you have an action bar written out for you natively. And if you need to leverage a background thread, you can do that too, uh, as needed. But it's a little bit less common case. And both of these frameworks, React Native and NativeScript, uh, use JavaScript core and V8 JavaScript engines to execute JavaScript code at runtime. And they just leverage them slightly differently. So when you think React Native, you think bridge. And when you think NativeScript, you think awesome. No, sorry. OK, never mind. <laughs> and then we have Ionic. And this is really the worst infographic ever. So I, I, I couldn't find anything better. Um, but it, they're built with Cordova. And Cordova means packaging HTML, CSS, and JavaScript into apps that can run on mobile and desktop devices. And it provides this plugin architecture for accessing native functionality beyond the reach of JavaScript run from a web browser. So an Ionic app is a UI that runs in a web view. So Ionic, web view. That's, 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 that's the little word association of the day. So HTML5 is embedded inside this view, and a native bridge accesses native resources wrapped as Cordova plugins. For example, if you need to leverage the camera, you just ask Cordova to give you the camera. All right, that's it for notes. OK, so I just wanted to kind of lay out for you some similarities of all these frameworks. So all of these frameworks, of course, support building Android and iOS mobile apps. They all support integrating native code, where the framework can't handle that, those use cases out of the box. They all leverage JavaScript. And they're all free and open source projects. So howda, howda, howda. At a glance, the differences could be um, differing support for Windows, desktop, and web. Um, they have this different basic technology that I just went over, hybrid, runtime, bridge. They have different monetization strategies. Um, this is kind of interesting, how they're figuring out how they're going to support the product going forward. Um, so that's something just to pay attention to. There's a lot of selling of tooling, selling of support, not so much in the React Native world. And then this is an interesting little tidbit for you. They have different licensing. So um, remember when React got a lot of flack for being on that modified BDSM license? That one? <laughs> so they got off of that license, and now they're on, I believe, Apache, like all the rest of them, except for React Native. Isn't that interesting? Why? I don't know. But check the repo. It's right there in front of your eyes. <laughs> That's kind of different. So for this talk, I decided to um, build an app for you all. Uh, I decided I wanted to build a master detail display for cheeses with um, an image, a short and a long description. And you click on it, and then you get a large image, and then the full description of the cheese. So I just scraped the web <laughs> for a bunch of cheese <laughs> and uh, popped it into Firebase so that I could use them across these apps. I wanted these apps to have identical styling, and I wanted them to be fed by Firebase, because that's kind of like what I know. It's the fastest thing for me to do. <laughs> so. Three identical apps in Ionic, React Native, and NativeScript. And we're going to celebrate the crystals. You know, an, an aged Hauda cheese, you get these crystals, you're going to crunch in there. That's kind of awesome. So we're going to look for the crystals. Okay? What's great about these frameworks? And also watch out for the mold. <laughs> That's gross. So what's not so fabulous about these, um, about these frameworks? So if you're interested, take a look at this repo. It's called Cheese Fest. And each, it has folders. Um, 
the Ionic one is in the Ionic folder, NativeScript is in NativeScript, and React Native is in React Native. And then um, the idea kind of caught fire in my community, and one of my friends built a, a Flutter app. And I, I didn't want to talk about that because, again, apples and oranges, Flutter is using Dart, and I wanted to, you know, stay with JavaScript for this talk. But it's a really great example of building the same app over and over and over again. And I invite you, I accept pull requests if somebody wants to make something with Onsen UI or something interesting, you know, grab, grab the info and, and build away. So we'll make a little teaching tool. So the agenda today is to, to talk about how these various frameworks create, emulate, and debug, how you're going to fetch your data out of Firebase, three different strategies, believe it or not, uh, styling, how it feels to style these apps, and then again, the crystals in the mold, gotchas and goodies, uh, reversed. All right. <laughs> so here's your attic app. That's how it looks. Mmm. Tasty. Ooh, I like Beamster. So I did a lot of research for this talk. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's talk about getting started with Ionic. I like Ionic. Ionic's fun. How many Ionic developers here? Oh, not so many, a little bit. Yeah, it's fun. So there are a couple ways to get started with Ionic. Basic getting started experience that they push you towards is, the, is using the CLI. So that's kind of interesting. So you install the Ionic CLI, and along with it comes Cordova. And then you just type in Ionic, start my app, and then you can say, I want it to be a tabbed app, for example. There's a couple choices they give you. CD into the folder, and then Ionic serve. Ionic serve will get you r your app running in the browser. So um, remember, this is, a, this is really a web technology. You know, we're dealing with web views here. So you start, you can get a long ways running your app in the browser, and then when you're ready, you can run it on device. I think it's uh, Ionic, Emulate, iOS, my, uh, my app, something like that. And they have another strategy for getting started, which is the Ionic Creator. It's freemium, so you can do a certain amount for free, and then when you want to keep going with it, they make you pay. So you know, got to keep the lights on, so that's all cool. Again, so you start emulating using Ionic Serve right in the browser. And then, yep, oh, sorry, I Ionic Cordova emulate iOS. So that's how you would um, emulate um, in, the, um, in the native uh, emulator. So debugging in Ionic is fine, perfectly reasonable. It's a web technology, so as you would expect, you're going to be debugging in a browser with Chrome DevTools. But you can also use native tools. You can use Xcode or ADB to debug your issues as you see them. Like if you're running your app on device and you want to get information, you can dig into the native ways of debugging. Uh, there is a Visual Studio Code Cordova DevTools. It's kind of interesting. They leverage the Cordova DevTools uh, to, to help them debug. So let's talk about how the code looks a little bit. So to, to fetch the data, which is the first thing we need to do, we're going to use the Angular Fire module. That's interesting, because you would think that would be mostly for the web. Well, it works in Ionic. So you grab, you import your Angular Fire module from Angular Fire 2, and then you have your config from Firebase. And you start your ng, Ionic is using Angular, of course, so there's an ng module that you're going to be dealing with in your Angular Fire module. You initial, initialize your app by bringing in your Firebase config. And then you go ahead and build out the master screen. So you create a cheeses observable, and then you can uh, create this cheeses, and then it, that's basically going to query the data, database in about one line. It's really actually pretty clean. And then you have these ionic mo um, modules, I believe they're called. So you're creating a list of cheeses with a let, let cheese of cheeses, bring it in asynchronously, and um, then you just display cheese image and, and then the cheese name. So that's your master screen. And to style it, this is one of the strengths of Ionic. They always look pretty out of the box. They're using SAS, and they give you some global, so you can very quickly and easily change, uh, change the, um, the base colors that you need to work with. And it gives you nice themes out of the box. Looks very hot. So the crystal. The crystal of Ionic is that they always look nice out of the box. And um, if you like Angular, then this might be something you want to look at, because they definitely have always been on the Angular train. They moved from Angular 1 to Angular 2 with all the pain that came with that. <laughs> the mold. Reliance on Cordova. Cordova is one of these technologies that's, um, I wouldn't say dying, but it's a little bit sun sudden setting. It's fading a little bit. People are looking for other options out there, wanting to do something with, on mobile that's not running in a web view. So um, it's, Ionic has been around for a long time. Very solid technology. Make a beautiful app, but just remember that it's running with a reliance on Cordova. So this is the part of the talk that I have um, 
the least familiarity with. I'm neither a React developer nor a React Native developer. So this was a challenge. And it's really interesting to just jump feet first into a new technology and see how fast and easy you can get an app running. Um, this was a real, a real interesting experience for me. So a couple ways of getting started with uh, React Native. You install Create React Native App. You know, there's Create React App. Well, they have Create React Native App. And then Create React Native App. My app will scaffold you out a very basic app, CD into it, and NPM start. And then it's going to be emulated in Expo. Now, Expo is a companion app that they offer you to kind of get started quickly. So your app is running in Expo. And Expo works on both simulator and on device. Um, it's, a very, it's a very nice little companion app that they offer. I think it's community built. And then there's the advanced way, which you're eventually going to have to just bite the bullet and do. You need Node, Watchman, and React Native CLI. Use the React Native CLI to init a new app, CD into it, and then run iOS, run Android. React Native, run iOS, run Android. And then you can start emulating without Expo, so directly on your device or in your simulator. And Expo has some interesting little tooling around it. This, in the CLI, they offer you a QR code. I, I thought that was kind of clever, kind of kind of nice. So you can start working immediately in Expo. And then when you need to get into your simulator, I believe because this is a bridging technology, they have souped up the um, Xcode experience somehow. And you have all this interesting stuff. You can swipe up, enable hot reloading, toggle your inspector. There's some serious tooling going on in the React Native sphere. So um, it's really interesting to, to see the differences, for me particularly, since I'm kind of immersed in, in the other world. Uh, so with React Native, you can debug in browser, debug on device. device. They have this interesting um, red box. When you have an error, it's just like blows up in a horrible way. <laughs> you know, you have royally screwed up your app, so here's a big red box for you. Uh, and you can use some the React developer tools in your browser. That's nice. OK, here goes the code. So let's see if I can remember how to do this. All right, so to get your data from Firebase, you use the standard Firebase require to get your code, um, to, get to, to uh, invoke Firebase. And then you create a config with all the information that you need. And then in your Firebase app in this constant, you initialize your app by feeding in the Firebase config information. And then this get ref, get ref method is going to return Firebase app database ref. So it's basically getting the database ready to be queried. You start, you start querying it here in the constructor. This items ref, um, get ref, child cheeses is the collection I'm going to query. Oh, React. <laughs> so uncomfortable right now. <laughs> OK. Um, and then you can build the master screen. So the master screen looks a bit like this. So it's, you're looking again for that, the snapshot to come in via Firebase. And then you're going to be creating um, an array of items and pushing all the data into it to kind of like triage it out and clean it up and get it ready to be uh, listened for, listened for any items coming into, uh, into the uh, data collection. And then here is the little template where you're going to display item name. So you're going to display all your items this way in, in line like that. Styles threw me a little bit. Um, again, not a React developer, but it's really interesting to see the differences in styles. So you have a separate file called styles.js, not CSS. And they have this way of creating a constant of a style sheet from React, and then they create a style object and use that here, bring it in, and then use it, oops, sorry, in, um, in, the, in the view itself. It just felt different to me. Not better, not worse, just different. You know, learning curve. Crystal. Obviously, for me, the crystal was the developer experience by, via the emulator. It's really interesting. The mold. <laughs> Once you scaffold your app, ah, uh, what do you do? <laughs> I was Googling Stack Overflowing like no tomorrow. <laughs> so um, the getting started experience, I think, with React Native um, is pretty, uh, it's just off the grid. You're not getting handheld at all. <laughs> um, and for example, I didn't know how to make an action bar. And action bars are complicated. This looks different on iOS. It looks different on Android. It's styled differently. It's got some serious stuff behind it that need to happen, back buttons and all this stuff. You have to DIY. You have to do it yourself. That, that yeah, I didn't love that. So <laughs> that was a mold. OK, native script, native script. Oh, phew. OK, native script. Um, yes. Here is an app built with native script. <laughs> so getting started experience. Um, 
Full disclosure, my colleague TJ Van Tol and I are heavily invested in the native script getting started experience, so we try, we try to make it as awesome as possible in terms of tutorials and that sort of thing, but we have some, um, okay, I'll try to be objective. There are some really interesting tools that you can use to get started. Uh, Playground is one of them, so play.nativescript.org. It's a little bit like the Expo Playground, they have this sort of thing, um, but you're building in the browser and then you can run it in a companion app on device. Um, there's a tool called Side Sidekick, which is basically the CLI, but um, abstracted away into a desktop app, so you can use that to kind of manage your plugins and that sort of thing. That would be a basic way of getting started. An advanced way of getting started would be install Node and the NativeScript CLI, and then use TNS, Telerik NativeScript, to create my app. So TNS, create my app, and that'll scaffold it with a template. It just so happens that one of those templates is a master detail screen, so <laughs> yeah, that was really, really helpful. Um, CD into my app, and then TNS run iOS, so that'll run it in your emulator. Emulate directly on device or in the simulator. And here we go. So TNS run iOS. We'll start live sync working for you. So it'll start, to, it'll start refreshing as you make changes in your code. Just live sync, live sync, live sync. TNS run Android. The debugging experience um, is um, kind of joining the rest of, the, of these frameworks um, in its, its uh, standard way of doing things. You can type TNS debug iOS or Android, and you are allowed to use Chrome DevTools. Um, when you think about it, that's actually pretty cool. You're building natively, but you're using web technologies to debug. I think that's neat. Uh, you can also use native tools if you like, Xcode, ADB. Uh, you can use the Visual Studio uh, Code NativeScript plugin. There's also a Visual, Visual Studio NativeScript plugin, so you can have some tooling around that. Use Sidekick or Playground to debug. So there's a little, you click the little debug in the side, and it's like launch on iOS. It's really cool. Set some breakpoints, go to town. Uh, Chrome DevTools and Visual Studio Code. Okay, code, get your data. Now this is, this is a vanilla, what we would call a vanilla native script app. So it looks a bit like this. So with, in this situation, you need to use um, the Firebase, the native script Firebase plugin, which is built by Eddie Verbruchen. Take a bow if you're still here. Uh, I heard a peep. <laughs> um, great, great, great friend of, of native script. Uh, so this is a plugin that actually is using not the uh, JavaScript SDK, but the native SDK. So um, I believe if you're in, you, in the React Native ecosystem, you would use a, the native, uh, there's a plugin similar to this for React Native so that you can get more native functionality in your React Native app if you need it. So in this situation, you go ahead and use this plugin. And then similarly, you're going to grab your data um, by adding an, an add value event listener and watching for data to flow into, into your observable. Um, this is all done in a service, a cheese service. And it's pushing all the cheese data into a nice array. And then in, your, um, in the other file that you're going to be writing the, uh, that's leveraging the cheese service, you're going to load up your data by subscribing to cheese. So this is all good. Uh, building the master screen, I use NativeScript modules heavily. <laughs> so uh, I use the rad list view which is basically a souped up list view that offers a lot, lots of interesting layouts. So you can see the, um, the different layouts that you're using here, stack layout, a grid layout with the image. So this is your master screen. And then this is all I had to do to style my app. That's nice. I used a native script theme. I used lemon theme <laughs> and then added a little bit of padding. That's it. So the crystal, I took the liberty of adding a couple extra crystals here. Crystals here would be the getting started with templates. So you have so much choice of kind of fully fledged handheld templates that you can get started with quickly. Uh, helpful development tools. Tooling is nice. Themes. Themes really save you a lot of time of tinkering with CSS. Um, you can use, and I think this is the most important thing I want you to walk away with, is that you can use um, vanilla native script with no framework at all. You can use Angular. Or you can use Vue.js and stay tuned. We're going to talk about Vue tomorrow with NativeScript. You're going to love it. The mold, even, even with NativeScript, there's a little mold. Well, the installation can be challenging. Um, full disclosure, I probably, because I had all the NativeScript tooling, Xcode, um, Android Studio, my React Native experience was probably a little smoother. So you know, I already had all these kind of mobile tools that you have to have if you're going to do any kind of native mobile development anyway. But, a lot of people do have trouble with the installation. 
So there are just so many delicious choices out there for us mobile developers. It's a great time to be alive. Um, very exciting. And um, I just wanted to brace yourself because we're going to end with some crazy cheese memes. There are a lot of cheese memes out there. So this is my second favorite one. What music does cheese listen to? But this is the best one. Cheese. It's the opium, opium of the mouses. <laughs> Isn't that the best? <laughs> it even has a little mustache. <laughs> okay. I'll stop now. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs>